Hello, Miguel from Grumo here, and in this video I want to showcase the capabilities of GPT-4 Vision, which was recently released and allows users to submit images and analyze them and extract data from them. Now, I was very surprised as to how powerful this new model is, and I created a Glide app that leverages this new model using Glide's OpenAI integration. And you can demo this same app if, if you go to grumo.com slash demo GPT vision. And if you want to get a copy to play with this demo yourself, you can go to grumo.com forward slash get GPT vision. Now, if you get a copy, you do need to get your own OpenAI API key. So you have to go to platform.openai.com and then you can get your own OpenAI API key, which you would enter in your template under settings. Then you would go to integrations, look for OpenAI, and then you would enter your API key in order to run this template and analyze images using GPT-4 vision. Now, so I run 28 tests under 11 different categories to see how powerful this model is. And I was extremely surprised. So there is actually 11 categories here from analyzing art, Cart repairs, fly safety, gaming strategy, human beauty, interior design, nutrition, receipts, recruiting, sports, and even website design. Now, not all the results are as good. Some of them are extremely amazing. Some of them are, mm, there is uh, still some work to be done. Let me just go through some of them. You can go uh, yourself through the demo to see how these images were analyzed. But for example, let's go to sports. Uh, I play tennis, I would like to analyze my strokes, and although for a sports video would be ideal, you can still infer the quality of a stroke or to a certain degree by using still images. So in this case, I'm using a still image of a player that is hitting a forehand and it can, it's, it's a little bit jammed. From the perspective of a proper forehand, this would be average, if not a little bit bad. And the score they provided is actually pretty accurate, six out of 10. Now you can see the prompt, the exact prompt that I used to send to OpenAI via Glides integration with OpenAI here. And you can copy it if you want to, you could uh, use it on your own app. Uh, but basically here I'm saying you're a professional tennis coach, you will analyze the following still image from a tennis player, provide feedback as to how to improve and score estimating how the stroke looks from one to 10. One being bad, 10 being very good. And then I have this in order to make sure that the output of the call is in JSON format. So I can divide it into analysis and feedback and then the score. And then I also say provide only the JSON object, don't wrap the object with JSON and because for some reason I was getting this piece of text which gave me error. So I just made sure that I didn't get this in the return message from OpenAI. And this seemed to work consistently well. Now the analysis is saying it's a compact screen on the forehand with the racket preparing to hit in front of the body. It's extremely good at analyzing what is going on inside an image indicating good weight transfer. To enhance the forehand, the player should turn their shoulders more for full rotation, increasing the power of the stroke. They should also ensure that the head remains stable, blah, 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 keeping the non -nominate. So in, when I was analyzing images of, in this case, tennis stroke, it would give you general advice as to how to perform the stroke properly, but it was not good at analyzing what was wrong with the image given. So I would say that uh, OpenAI, uh, the GPT-4 vision for this type of purpose would be not ideal. Uh, it's really good at anal analyzing what it's seen, but not so much at uh, giving you feedback as to how to improve. Okay, let me uh, use a different example here. Uh, another example would be car repairs. So, so I said, basically analyze this car and tell me how could I fix it. And then tell me, uh, and then provide a numerical score from one to ten as, as to how easy would be the repairing job required. So here it would be very difficult. That's why the score is low. And it was able to very well describe what was wrong with this vehicle, and that basically would need a full restoration. And that probably you would uh, it, there was a different version because every time you click analyze you would get uh, a different read on the image but the score was pretty similar uh, basically you need sourcing uh, you need a, a, a new engine 
repairing or replacing body panels, addressing potential rust, repainting and overhauling. Basically, you have to do a, a lot of work, a complete inspection of suspension, suspension and brakes. So from this image, it was able to infer that this is a car that is pretty much destroyed. I would need a tremendous amount of work to make it work again. So very accurate in this case. Let me uh, look at, for example, food. It would, I would ask it how healthy this food is and estimate the caloric value of this meal. And again, it seems to be very accurate describing. So I always ask two things. One is to describe the image so I can see how accurate is GPT Vision at describing the contents of an image. And then I would ask it to provide feedback based on that analysis and provide a score uh, in this case as to how healthy this meal is. Right, and eight out of ten, this seems to be pretty healthy. You have avocado and uh, eggs, and basically, exactly what it says here is exactly the description. Again, you can go to grumo.com forward slash demo GPT vision in order to see the descriptions by yourself. And you can see here the different calorie estimations, and then it says that it's quite nutritious. and. And then it gives you feedback as to maybe how you could improve. You, you consider, uh, however, considering the portion sizes will be crucial to ensure balanced calorie intake, the sugar content from fruits. A little bit generic, but again, uh, from the perspective of giving you an overall score as to how healthy a meal is from, a, from just a still image of a dish in this case, uh, it's pretty accurate because if I go and I show it a nice fatty burger, I get 3 out of 10. Uh, which well, it seems pretty accurate because this is not a very healthy meal, okay? Uh, also analyzing website design, we have here an old website from Yahoo, uh, maybe from the, I don't know, early, late 90s or early 2000s, and you can see it gave it a very low score and exactly tells you why, uh, because this design is indicative of early web design trends with a simple layout, bright colors, and basic navigation elements, but then it tells me how could I, how could I fix it? So if you're trying to get feedback on your designs, website designs, then GPT Vision seems to be pretty accurate. Uh, the same thing here, if I go to a modern design, it gives me a 8.5 out of 10. This is OpenAI's homepage, and it's giving a 8.5 10. It tells, it's telling you exactly what it's seen and then why this design is good. The design is highly effective with a strong visual hierarchy, which makes the website easy to na navigate. The text is legible and the color contrast ensure good re re readability. Again, very good at analyzing images and providing feedback as to the score and how to improve whatever you're asking it to uh, improve. You can also see the prompt that I gave to analyze this image. We have more. Uh, for example, analyzing art. It would uh, tell you in quite detail what uh, technique was used and also how to improve that, uh, that picture. Uh, we have also one where I th it failed quite a bit was analyzing an uh, instrument panel from, a, from an airplane. And I was asking it whether this plane was, how close it would be from installing by looking at the instruments. Now this gets more complicated because you're asking GPT Vision to look at each of the instruments and get an overall assessment of the condition of the airplane at this moment and whether we're flying this plane safely and how close it's from installing. In this case, it did uh, completely read this wrong. Basically said that airspeed indicator approximately 100 knots, that is accurate well within normal operating range, at, uh, that's correct. Aircraft nose is slightly above the horizon indicating a climb or lever flight. That is completely wrong. We're in a steep turn to the left and it's saying that this is level flight. Engine running about 2400 RPM. So it's very good at reading the in instruments, not so good at estimating what's happening with the plane uh, given the instrument readings. So uh, it, it fails a little bit there. Where it fails dramatically and it's failed uh, also in normal GPT is at, for example, playing Wordle. It will read exactly what's happening here. So it basically says that share and clone are the two words that I've put here. But if you know how to play Wordle, you know that the E has to be now uh, in the last position of this 
five letter word, right? So the correct word will have E for sure in the last position. But here, when it gives me feedback as to which would be a possible next word, it says four words and two out of the four words are actually incorrect because it's saying given and mixed, which N in N and D would be correct guesses. And that's incorrect because the next correct guess would have to have E in the last position. And then I also, I estimated, what do I say? Uh, a score estimating the difficulty to finish this game from one to 10. And here is saying that, I mean, this is very hard to estimate basically. I mean, if, if I had gotten correct, maybe three out of four, then it should be, this, this number should be very high, but uh, not good at providing gaming strategy, at, at least in Wordle. Now, I was really good at reading a uh, this hand, uh, this poker hand, and saying that it's basically the best hand you can get, and that's why it's giving 10 out of 10. So that could that was pretty good. It's also pretty good at analyzing chess from a still image. This is a game towards the end where the whites, let me see, a score estimating how the whites are doing from 1 to 10. And it's pretty good at uh, seeing that the whites are winning and giving you feedback as to, let me see, detail, uh, detail providing as to who is winning and what they need to do a checkmate and also provides pretty good feedback. Now, I'm not, I'm not a really good chess player, but I can tell by the position of these uh, figures here that the whites are winning. And this is exactly what it's saying, eight out of 10 for, for the whites. Now, what else do we have here? Uh, reading receipts. Very accurate. I asked it to read the receipt. Tell me what are the main categories of the items from this Walmart receipt. I was able to read the total, including the tax. Also, I asked it to tell me an estimate of how uh, reasonable the prices are. And I mean, this is very relative, but it gave me a pretty good explanation saying that typically Walmart prices are known for competitive pricing and given the variety of items purchased and known brand reputation for value without specific market data for comparison an estimated score for prices might be around eight. So it will give you, it's a pretty accurate explanation as to why it's giving you a score based on the knowledge that it has, uh, in this case, about Walmart being a reasonably priced store. So pretty, pretty um, amazing. We also have, for interior design, was pretty good too. So I had two images here, one of a neatly decorated bedroom and one that is uh, very messy. And you can see the, the nicely uh, decorated bedroom gets an eight out of 10 and a full explanation as to what GPT-4 vision is seeing with that really detailed description as to what is seen in the image and also feedback as to why it's giving the score and what it can, could be done to improve the design of this room. And the same thing for the room that is messy, two out of 10, it is able to recognize that this is a messy room and I'm not prompting in any leading way. I'm just saying analyze you're a professional interior decorator and will analyze and describe in detail the following photo of a bedroom. I'm not saying it's a messy bedroom, I'm just saying analyze it and then give me a score and feedback as to how can I improve this bedroom, right? Again, the analysis and the feedback is extremely detailed and accurate and the score seems to reflect exactly what a human would provide uh, by looking at this uh, visually. So very, very impressive. So I also asked to analyze and score human beauty. Now this is very relative, what's beautiful or not. Sometimes it actually declined to provide scores and feedback as to how to, let's say in this case, improve its face. But after some trial and error, I was able to get GPT-4 Vision to give me scores and reasoning behind the scores and even comparisons. In this case, I uploaded an, an image where half of the image was one person and the other half was another person. And then it would provide uh, scores with and reasoning, you know, basically saying that the younger person with more defined features uh, seems to be a little more attractive, which you could in general agree with that assessment. Also analyzing the beauty of each of the faces independently. And in this case, for example, this person is um, having a very uh, extreme expression 
And it also says that like the individual is displaying a very expressive and exaggerated facial expression, which is not typically evaluated in standard beauty assessment. So it's saying I will give you a score, but I'm aware that this is not a neutral face expression. Therefore, it's hard to give an accurate estimate. Very, very um, impressive the ability to analyze images. What else do we have here? I guess the a, a real world application that could be very useful uh, in the enterprise would be recruiting. And in this case, let's say we're recruiting for, for a software engineer, senior software engineer position, and I uploaded three resumes. One is for a, an actual a person that has uh, a senior has had experience as a senior software engineer, somebody that has less experience than somebody that is an accountant. And then basically tell me how, here's the prompt, we could go here to this prompt here. The prompt is analyze and describe in detail the following resumes, provide feedback as to which person is most qualified to work as a senior software engineer, and also provide two separate scores estimating how suitable each person would be to fill a senior software engineer role from one to 10. And it basically here on the left we have, which is the person with less experience and here somebody with more experience and he was able to accurately assess the different level of experience and being able to provide a correct assessment as to the person in the right having more experience and therefore being more suitable for a senior software engineer role. Then I also asked to evaluate its resume independently. And here we have, for example, this one, this one would be the person with less experience and it gives six out of 10 and the person with more experience, seven out of 10. So again, it is giving a higher score to the person with more experience in software, which makes sense for this position. And then here it says gives one out of 10 because this is the resume of an accountant. So it has nothing to do with software and is, it was able to figure out that there is zero correlation between the position that we're trying to hire for and this resume, and it, it tells you exactly why. The resume provides for a certified public accountant with over nine years of experience. Again, very accurate at analyzing the content of the image and then providing you feedback as to why uh, the score is so low. While the candidate appears to be very capable in the fields of finance and accounting, there is no evidence or experience or skills related to software development I mean, this is just amazing. If, if you want to build an, an aid or a tool that helps you rate resumes based on uh, specific criteria, I wouldn't say completely replacing your HR department, but just getting something that allows you to score resumes and at least weed out the ones that have absolutely nothing to do with the position, for example, or compare resumes and get some reasoning as to one is getting more score than the other, this tool could save you tens, hundreds, maybe thousands of hours in the recruiting process. I think that almost any of these applications could become uh, its own business in itself. You know, the ability to provide feedback on websites, to analyze meals and tell you what's healthy or not, to analyze receipts automatically. For game strategy, maybe it's not that good. For flight safety, definitely not good at all. For interior design seems to be very good. For sports analysis, not that good. For analyzing beauty in general, it seems to be pretty accurate. For mechanics or car repairs, maybe just to have an, an overall assessment is good. Maybe not so good to go into details. And for recruiting, I think it could be a very powerful tool. So again, very impressed with this first release of GPT-4 Vision. And if you want to play with it and at least see the results, you can go again to grumo.com forward slash demo GPT vision. And if you want to get a copy of this template and use your own API key, then you can go to grumo.com forward slash get GPT vision. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.